All right, hello, my friends. I'm out of practice in this notes video department, but I'm gonna get it back. So, um, week one notes, introduction to vectors. I know you guys watched a video on Friday or what, Thursday or Friday or whatever day it was, um, and kind of got a little bit of an introduction from the video, and I know a lot of you have taken physics before. Um, so this week's gonna be pretty easy. Um, I'm just gonna kind of go over the different forms of a vector, um, some characteristics of vectors like magnitude and direction. Um, we'll do some algebra with vectors, in other words, like multiplying, addition, subtraction, that sort of thing. Um, and we'll talk about unit vectors. So it's really just very, very basic. Um, we're gonna be using the Pythagorean theorem and some inverse trig um, in order to do some of this stuff, but the math itself is very easy. So I'll share my screen, we'll get started. Uh, and then at the beginning of next week in class, um, I kind of have a little practice set for us to work a few more problems together um, to help make your in-class assignment and your IXL easier. So I'll share my screen with you. All right, so um, first thing we wanna talk about is some different forms of a vector. Um, there's two different forms of a vector. There's the component form of a vector. Um, which uses these sort of um, arrow looking um, symbols and it's delta x, delta y. So remember that means the change in x and the change in y. So I've given two examples of vector w and vector v and that little symbol on top is the like universal vector um, symbol. Um, and so, for example, vector v, uh, sorry, vector w is 2, negative 4. So that doesn't mean, that's not a coordinate point. That's not like the point 2, negative 4. Uh, it's talking about the change in, um, in the vector from its starting point to its ending point. It's changing in the x direction by 2 and it's changing in the y direction by negative 4. So I have this array of dots. The reason why it's not an actual xy coordinate grid is because it hasn't indicated on there where the vector starts and ends. It just says how it's changing. So I really could pick any point on this array as the starting point for vector w and it says that the change in the x direction is 2. Boom and the change in the y direction is negative four, negative one, two, three, four. So that means this would be the starting point and this would be the ending point. Um, what I'm trying to say is that I really could have picked any point on this array to be the starting point, and then the ending point would be to the right two and down four from that starting point. So I really could have started anywhere, moved to the right two, moved down four, and that would have given me an accurate picture of vector w. Now, if I specifically tell you where vector w starts, then you can graph it on a coordinate plane. Otherwise, we just graph it on this array, and I'll label that as vector w. And then vector v is 2, 1. So again, I'm just going to pick any old place uh, on this array. 2 in the x direction, so 1, 2 in the x direction. 1 in the y direction, positive 1 in the right, y direction. So here is vector v. Cool? So because I didn't give you any specific starting point from which to uh, move, um, I just kind of picked two points on the array to graph those two. We're going to use vector v and vector w. So um, there's another form of a vector. It's called the linear combination form of a vector, and it looks like this. Um, it's delta xi plus delta yj. Sorry, that's hard to write. So in other words, um, this is component form of vector w but I also could write vector w in a linear combination form, which would be 2i plus negative 4j, or you could write that as 2i minus 4j, uh, and that would be the linear combination form of this vector. Uh, you'll see a little bit of both. So on your homework, on your assignments and stuff like that, sometimes I'll say give the vector in component form. Sometimes I'll say give it in linear combination form. They mean the same thing. It's just two different forms of the same uh, vector. So, all right, cool. Um, algebra of vectors. We'll hop over here to the right, okay? Uh, the two things that we're going to be doing is scalar multiplication of vectors and then vector addition. Um, both extremely easy. So for example, uh, scalar multiplication is whenever you multiply by a number. 
So for an for example, if I want to find a scalar multiplication of vector v, so for example, I want double vector v. That's a scalar multiplication because I'm multiplying vector v by uh, by uh, like just a number. So the good news is that's extremely easy. That means I'm going to be taking the components of vector v, two and one, and I'm going to be doubling them. So my new vector would be four comma two. You see how easy that is? It's literally just kind of like distributed. You're just doubling, doubling vector v, tripling it, multiplying by half. You can multiply by any number, any scalar number, in order to lengthen uh, the vector. So um, what I think is interesting is when you multiply by a scalar, so for example, this is vector v. It was over two up one. After multiplying it by a scalar, now it is over four up two. So what I kind of want to just call to your attention is that multiplying by a scalar changes the length of the vector, but what does it not change? It does not change the direction of the vector. It's still going over two and up one. It's just multiplying by two in length. So I think that's interesting when you're multiplying by scalar multiplication, multiplying by a number, it changes the length of the vector, but it does not change the direction of the vector. Um, some people kind of think of that as the slope. So anyway, um, addition, vector addition is also very easy. For example, um, if I want to do vector W plus vector V, then I would simply take the components of vector W and add them to the components of vector V for my new vector. 2 and 2 is 4, negative 4 and 1 is negative 3, so there is the sum, the resulting vector from adding those two vectors together. So anytime you do any sort of uh, scalar algebra of vectors, scalar multiplication or addition, what we call that, pro that um, the product that comes out when you are multiplying or adding, we call that the resulting or the resulting vector. Um, so it says addition, we could also subtract W and V, uh, which means that it would just be 2, negative 4, minus 2, 1, and then I would just have to be careful, 2 minus 2 is 0, negative 4 minus 1 would be negative 5, so the resulting vector would be 0, negative 5. So what does that vector look like, 0, negative 5, 0, negative 5? Well, uh, oh, I wrote plus right there, and I should have writ written minus because we just subtracted. So let's say plus negative. My bad. Um, so, so what I want to kind of show you here is what it looks like when you're adding vectors, when you're adding them. We've already kind of looked at what happens when you do a scalar multiplication. We said, okay, I understand that 2v doubles the length of v without changing the direction of v, but what does it look like whenever I actually take vector v and vector w and add them together? Um, so, what that looks like, uh, what you're going to do, if I want to take vector w and then I want to add vector v, uh, I'm going to start by drawing vector w and I'm going to start in this corner over here so I have room. Vector w is 2 to the right and down 1, 2, 3, 4. So notice all I did was take vector w and, and move it uh, to a different starting point, but it's still the same vector. So now, if I want to add vector v to vector w, what I do is I start at the tail, they call this uh, the tip and the tail, I start at the end of vector w, and then I'm going to add vector v onto the end of vector w. So from here is my new starting point, vector v is 2 to the right and up 1, so here is vector v being added onto the end of vector w. Does that make sense? It's quite easy. So I think on your assignment for next week, uh, I have a couple of problems where I give you two vectors and then I ask you to show me what that vector addition looks like. So you draw one vector, then you tack the second vector on to the end of the first vector, and then your resulting vector is the vector that is created between the two. So this is the resulting vector, which is called vector w plus vector v. It starts at the starting point and it ends at the ending point. So let's check this. Uh, when I added w and v together, the resulting vector was 4, negative 3. 
that looks pretty good to me. Do you agree that this goes over to the right? One, two, three, four, and down one, two, three. So that checks out, right? That resulting vector that I got algebraically is also the one that I got graphically. So there's some questions on your homework that ask you to do that, that ask you to uh, do the algebra or the addition and subtraction uh, algebraically and then to do it um, graphically as well. So, all right, cool. Pre that's pretty easy so far. Um, the next thing that we want to talk about are these two characteristics of a vector. Every vector has two characteristics. that It has magnitude and it has direction. I think you guys probably understand direction angle. Um, one thing that you want to note is that the direction angle of a vector is always from the horizontal. So from the horizontal, for, so for example, if I was looking for the direction of vector V, where would I be measuring that from? Well, here is the horizontal. So the measure of the direction angle would be the angle formed here from the horizontal to vector V. Does that make sense? So good news is last semester we learned everything that we need to learn in order to be able to solve uh, for that direction angle. So I'll kind of just sketch a picture of this. Um, this is vector V. It went over two to the right and it went up one, agreed? So what could I use to help me find the measure of this angle? And we kind of talked about this in our warm up this past week. Um, this is the opposite and the adjacent. So in order to find the measure of that angle, I would use the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. So uh, inverse tangent of, I guess we'll say that that is the change in Y and that is the change in X. In this case, for vector v, it's the inverse tangent of 1 over 2. And then I would just throw that into my calculator, make sure that I'm in degree mode, right? I'll put a little something, something here that says degree mode, right? And I can use my calculator to help me figure out what that theta is, which is awesome. Um, so this is going to be our formula to find the direction angle every time. Keep in mind that that direction angle that you're putting uh, into your calculator is always the direction angle measured from the horizontal. So pretty easy. All right. When we're talking about the magnitude of a vector, magnitude is just another word for length. Now, uh, if I'm looking at this vector right here and I want to know how long it is, do y'all see the right triangle that's happening here? What do I use to find the length of the hypotenuse of this right triangle? The Pythagorean theorem, which is extremely easy. So we're going to find the magnitude of vector v, and I'm here to tell you guys that this is the, um, is the symbol for the magnitude of vector v. So if I don't want to write find the magnitude of vector v, I can just write this. And you should know, hey, she wants me to find the magnitude of vector v. So how do I do that? It's just the Pythagorean theorem. So it's the change in X, so it's the change in X squared plus the change in Y squared and then square rooted. It's the Pythagorean theorem, right? You don't need to memorize this formula, why not? Because you know the Pythagorean theorem. You're like, I'm looking at this right triangle, two squared plus one squared is five, and so that means that the magnitude of vector v is the square root of five, right? You don't need to memorize some formula that is just the Pythagorean theorem. And then we should know inverse tangent of y over x as well. We kind of went over that a little bit in class. So anytime I ask you to find the magnitude of the direction of a vector, it's the Pythagorean theorem and the inverse tangent of the y over it, the x. Those are the two things that you're going to want to know for sure as far as, um, as far as that goes. So um, the next thing that we want to talk about is a unit vector, all right? A unit vector, unit, a unit circle has a radius of one. A unit vector has a magnitude of one. So a unit vector is a vector whose magnitude is one. Okay, so are either of these vectors unit vectors? No. 
Okay, we actually just found out that the magnitude of vector v is the square root of five. Do you agree that we found that out? We found out that the magnitude of vector v is the square root of five, which is, well, the square root of four is two, so the square root of five must be a little bit more than two. Okay, so the length of that vector, the magnitude of that vector is a little bit more than two. I want the magnitude of that vector to be equal to one. So that's kind of interesting. How do I do that? So let's think about vector v. This is vector v. Uh, it's over two and up one. And the magnitude is equal to the square root of five. What would I have to divide that magnitude by in order to make it equal one? I'm gonna force it to equal one. What could I divide that magnitude by in order for the magnitude to be equal to one? Well, why don't I just divide it by the square root of five? If I divide the magnitude by the square root of five, then now the magnitude is equal to one. So what's the trick? I need to make sure that I divide everything by the square root of five. So if I want to find a unit vector for vector v, in other words, I want vector v to be uh, a vector whose magnitude is one instead of the square root of five. So what did I do? I just divided all of the components by the square root of five. So the original vector of v was over two of one. I'm gonna divide everything here by the square root of five. So now the unit vector and the way that you write that, whoop, kind of funny looking, little, uh, what, it, carrot? Uh, the little carrot is now two over the square root of five and one over the square root of five. That vector right there is the V vector, but instead of having a magnitude of the square root of five, I have fixed it so that it has a magnitude of one. Therefore, it is called the unit vector of V quite easy. All you have to do is find the magnitude of the vector and then divide the vector by that magnitude and that will reduce uh, the magnitude of that vector down to one. So how do we do it? If you want to kind of write yourself a little note, um, the unit vector can be found by taking the vector and dividing it by the magnitude of that vector. Does that make sense? The unit vector is found by taking the vector and then dividing that vector by the magnitude of itself. All right, we're almost done, and then we're actually going to be able to do some problems together. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is the standard position of a vector. The standard position of a vector, here's the thing, I've kind of talked about this a little bit. We have all of these like arrays, yes? Just a bunch of like arrays of dots, and we're putting our vectors on there in no particular place because it doesn't. Um, really indicate any starting or ending point for these vectors. So for another, uh, in other words, if I'm looking at vector w, I could really pick any place on here as long as I go two to the right and one, two, three, four down, this will be vector w, right? All right, cool. Well, if I want to talk about vector w and I want to specifically talk about vector w in standard position, that means that I want the starting point, the initial point of vector w to be at the origin of the coordinate plane. So the standard position of a vector is when a vector has an initial point at the origin of the coordinate plane. So how easy is that? Very easy, right? I'm gonna take vector w and I'm gonna impose it onto this coordinate plane. I want the original point, the initial of starting point to be here. And then vector w is two to the right and one, two, three, four down. So now, instead of vector w just being some vector with magnitude and direction in space, vector w now lives on the coordinate plane. It has an initial point at zero, zero, and now I can actually name this point. This point is two comma negative four. So 
That's called the standard position. So if I ask you to, to draw a vector in standard position, that means I actually want you to put it on the coordinate plane and I want you to have the initial point of the vector at the origin. Pretty easy, okay? So just to review, this is everything you need to know about vectors, okay? Moving forward. Component form, combinate linear combination form. Scalar multiplication takes a vector. It doesn't change the direction of the vector. Instead, it multiplies the length, or I guess now we know the magnitude of the, uh, of the vector. Here we doubled it. If I multiply it by a half, the vector would shrink by a factor of a half, so on and so forth. Um, we can do vector addition or subtraction um, by clearly just taking the two vectors and adding them or subtracting them. And then geometrically, we kind of show what that looks like. Vector W, adding vector V to the end of vector W, and then the resulting vector is the vector that is created between the two. Um, learned about how to find the magnitude or the length using the Pythagorean theorem. Used, learned how to find the direction angle from the horizontal using inverse tangent. Learned how to find a unit vector, which is a vector whose magnitude is one. And we learned that to find the unit vector for any vector, all you have to do is divide that vector's components by its magnitude and then standard position. So feels like a lot, but if you're looking at this, um, the math itself is extremely straightforward and easy. The hardest thing you're doing is inverse tangent, which compared to last semester, you guys, is child's play. So um, we're going to spend the rest of these notes just maybe doing a couple of practice problems together. Um, I will have some more practice problems for us to do in class Monday and Tuesday, and then between those two things, you should be more than ready to get started on your end of class assignment and your IXL for the week. So here we go. Um, here they give us vector V and they give us vector W and they're asking us to just do a little bit of algebra using those vectors. Vector V plus vector W is going to be 2, negative 3 plus vector W, which is 3, comma 4. So in order to add those together, I'm literally just going to add the components. 2 and 3 is 5, negative 3 and 4 is 1. How easy is that? Very. All right, um, I really like to, um, some people, you might want to write this as W plus negative V. It does, those are equivalent. Um, here, W is first, three comma four, uh, plus negative V means that I'm going to just take the opposite of V, so that would be negative two and positive three. You definitely can just write minus here and then distribute the negative afterwards. It does not matter. So now let's add those together. 3 and negative 2 is 1. And 4 plus 3 is 7. Glorious. Um, here we have a little bit of scalar multiplication first. So 2 times vector v is going to be double vector v. So instead of 2, we'll have 4. Instead of negative 3, we'll have negative 6. And now I want to take 2v the scalar multiplication of V, and I want to add that to W. W is 3 comma 4. So my resulting vector is 7 negative 2. Yeah, I'm legitimately asking you to add. <laughs> That's how easy these things are. Um, and then the last thing they want us to do here is V plus W divided by 10. Well, I already did V plus W. I know vector V plus W is 5 comma 1. And they're asking me to divide those components by 10. That's pretty easy. 5 divided by 10 is 0.5. 1 divided by 10 is 0.1. You definitely can write that as 5 tenths or 1 half and 1 over 10, 1 tenth. You can write that as those as fractions instead of decimals if you would like to. All right, cool. Um, number two, find the magnitude and the direction of vector v. So we're going to use this vector v up here. Vector v is 2, negative 3. So I am going to just sketch a little picture. 2, negative 3, I'm just going to pick an initial point. 2 means I'm going to go 2 in the x direction, and then negative 3, 1, 2, 3 in the y direction. So this is my vector. Notice that I didn't draw that on a coordinate plane because it doesn't really matter where that vector is unless I specifically ask you to put it in standard position. So this side is 2, this side is negative 3. So first thing I'm going to do, why did I write square root? Anybody know? That's crazy. Sorry. 
just negative three, two, negative three. I think I'm just so stuck on the unit circle that I like can't help but do negative square root. Anyway, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the magnitude of vector v. And remember, we uh, used this notation here. So the magnitude of vector v is just the Pythagorean theorem. It's the square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. Notice that I put negative 3 in parentheses because we want to make sure that we uh, take care of the negative. So 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 squared is 9. So the magnitude of that vector is the square root of 13. So the length of that vector, the magnitude of the vector is the square root of 13, which is somewhere between three and four, about. So this is the square root of 13 as the magnitude, right? All right, cool. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to find the direction angle. Remember, the direction angle is always going to be from the horizontal which means that we're gonna be solving for this angle as our direction angle. Do y'all see that? So we have a formula, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the y value, which is negative three, over the x value, which is two. And I'm gonna let my calculator do this work for me. And we wanna be in degree mode. So grabbing my calculator, inverse tangent of negative three divided by two, I got negative 56.3 degrees. Why does it make sense that I got a negative theta? Because if this is our horizontal, aren't we moving backwards? So that's why it makes sense to me that that direction, the direction of that vector would be in the negative 56.3 degrees because it's measuring it from the horizontal uh, and it's moving backwards. So all of that makes pretty good sense to me. Good so far. This is extremely easy. Uh, this is extremely easy. Magnitude is found by doing the Pythagorean theorem. The direction angle is found by doing the inverse tangent of y over x. Uh, and in this case, the negative degree measure makes sense. Um, I, if I did ask you, like, hey, I want your theta, your direction angle to be in a positive, you could always, uh, you know, subtract from 360 and get that positive uh, angle instead. Awesome. Cool. More problems to do together on the next page. All right. This next one asks us to find the unit vector in the same direction as w. So they're telling us to take vector w and find the unit vector. So remember, we wrote on the last page how to find the unit vector. Well, all you do is you take vector w and you divide vector w by the magnitude of vector w. So first off, vector w is 3, 4. That's vector w. So I have vector w, vector w is three comma four. What I don't have is the magnitude of vector w, but I can find that. The magnitude of vector w can be found by just doing the Pythagorean theorem. Three squared plus four squared. Don't have to worry about negatives on this one, which is nice. Nine and 16, which is the square root of 25, which is five. So the magnitude of vector w is 5. So if I take that vector and I divide it by 5, I will get the unit vector, um, which would be 3 fifths and 4 fifths. So this would be vector w. It'd be in the same direction as vector w, except instead of having a length of 5, this vector is a unit vector, which means that it has a length of 1, or a magnitude of 1. So hopefully now that you see that, a lot of people have a lot of trouble with unit vectors, wrapping their heads around them, their minds around them. Uh, mathematically speaking, it's very easy to find a unit vector, um, and we'll keep dealing with them so you'll get more comfortable with them. So. Alrighty, vectors in standard position. So remember, standard position means that we're going to be drawing it, uh, sketching it in from the, on the coordinate plane. But first, we're going to start by doing it on this array. So sketch v, w, and v plus w 
to show a geometric interpretation of this vector. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find vector V plus vector W algebraically. So that would be two negative three plus three, four. And the resulting vector would be what I get by adding those two. So two plus three is five, negative three plus four is one. So what they want us to do here is they want us to show an, a geometric interpretation. So remember, when you're adding vectors, start with the first one and we're gonna add the second vector onto the end of it. So I'm gonna start, uh, hopefully I'm gonna pick this point, we'll see if it works, okay? I'm picking this as my starting point. Two, negative three means I go two to the right and down one, two, three. So here is my first vector. This is vector V and I'm gonna label it like that. If I'm adding vector W, remember that means that I'm gonna go to where vector V ended and I'm going to add on vector W. Vector W is to the right, one, two, three, and up one, two, three, four. So this, is vector w that has been added on to vector v. So where is the resulting vector? Remember the resulting vector is the vector that is formed by connecting the two from the beginning to the end. Five, one, does that look right? Looks right to me, over to the right, one, two, three, four, five, and up one. So this is vector v plus vector w. This is what we call a geometric interpretation of the addition of those two vectors. This would be the algebraic interpretation. So either way, quite easy. So sketch the resultant vector from part A in standard position. Well, what was the resultant vector? The resultant vector was the vector five comma one. And they want us to sketch that vector in standard position. Remember that means that they want us to essentially put that on the coordinate plane. So here's my coordinate plane. Uh, whenever I sketch in standard position, that means I wanna start at the origin and then five, one is my vector. So one, two, three, four, five, one. Here's my ending point. So here is my vector in standard position. Pretty easy, yes? C. give two coterminal angles that describe the vector in standard position. Okay, cool. So if I'm trying to describe this vector in standard position uh, and I'm trying to find the, the angle measure, do y'all agree that that is my theta right there? So let's just use the formula that we know in order to find that theta. Remember it's inverse tangent of y over x. So the y value is one, the x value is Five, agreed? So inverse tangent of one over five, grab my calculator. Inverse tangent of one over five is 11.3 degrees. Does, does that sound like a pretty like good answer as far as that little sliver goes? So that's 11.3 degrees, which is great. Uh, that'll do for one, but it says that it wants two angles. So bringing it back to last semester, a coterminal angle is just another angle that ends in the same spot. So we have some options. We could do one of two things. We could go all the way around 360 degrees and then add 11.3. Or we could start at, at zero and we could go backwards if we wanted to, to find a coterminal angle. So we have two options. We could either do 360 plus 11.3 degrees to get one of our angles, so 360 plus 11.3, which is 371.3 degrees, or uh, instead we could do 360 minus, or uh, I guess it would be um, 11.3 minus 360 To make it negative, 11.3 minus 360 is negative 348.7 degrees. Both of those would work as coterminal angles, right? 
negative 348.7 degrees or all the way around plus 11.3 degrees. I would say that both of those are co-terminal angles that describe that vector in standard position along with 11.3 degrees. So I've just given you some options. Okie dokie. Last problem, linear combination. Remember that's just the IJ form from the first page. Um, vector V. Vector V has a direction angle of 110 and a magnitude of eight in standard position. So that means I can confidently say that we're looking at this vector on the XY coordinate plane. So I'm gonna put the XY coordinate plane down. Uh, the magnitude of the vector is eight. What does that mean? That means that the length of the vector is eight and the direction angle is 110. So where's 110? Here's 90. So 110 is 20 degrees past that. So I'm gonna put my vector about right here if that works for you guys. Things I know about this vector. I know that the magnitude or the length of that vector is eight. The other thing that I know about this vector is that the direction angle in standard position, this angle here, theta, is equal to 110 degrees. All right, so this is kind of the opposite of every other problem we've done so far. In every other problem, I've given you the components, asked you to draw a picture, and then asked you to find theta and to find the magnitude. Now I'm telling you theta, and I'm telling you the magnitude, and I'm asking you to find the components of the vector. This should be pretty easy. What I would do is I would just drop down uh, here and make a right triangle. Yes. Um, this angle here is not going to be particularly useful because it's on the outside of the triangle that I just made. But here's the thing. If this is 110 degrees and this whole thing is 180 degrees, do you agree that you could just subtract and say that this is a 70 degree angle? Right. So now I'm just going to kind of redraw this triangle here. What I know is that the hypotenuse is 8 and that this angle here is 70. I need to find the x and the y components of the sector doing a little bit of trig, which is why we went over trig this week. <coughs> All right, cool. So if I want to find the x value, this is the adjacent and the hypotenuse. I need the adjacent looking for the hypotenuse. So think about trig. If I have adjacent and hypotenuse, do you agree that that's cosine? So katoa. So the cosine of 70 degrees is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which means that the x component can be found by multiplying both sides by 8 times the cosine of 70. So let's let our calculator do that work for us. 8 cosine of 70. 8 cosine of 70. Oops, oops. Is 2.74. So I'm going to call that about 2.7. Sound good? All right. Uh, I can do the same thing with the y, except this is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So instead of cosine of 70, it's going to be the sine of 70 equal to y over the hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 8. The y component is therefore 8 times the sine of 70. So the y component is 8 sine of 70. Oops. 7.52, so about 7.5. Sweet. So this length here, the change in x is 2.7. The change in y is 7.5. Recording. Just recording. Okay. So our vector v, and it says it wants it in um, ij form. So that means it's going to be 2.7i plus 7.5 j. So we'll do more of this in class on Monday and Tuesday and on your in-class assignment, but I mean the math is pretty pretty easy. So um, I'm going to take a picture of these notes and I'm going to post them to the module as well so that uh, in case you need a copy of my notes they're there for you as well. So all right.